And good day, welcome to the Acer channel where we will be having a look at some of the devices that are on sale from us. Okay, let's just jump in and today we will be looking at the Kenwood NX1200D. Now, in our country this gets sent as three different items, it's the radio and the charger and then a separate antenna. Because this is a uh, VHF device the antennas come in three splits and this is simply what the customer has ordered so this is 146 to 162 meg this is the middle split which I think is the more popular split as well we can have a look at the antenna later on but let's have a look at the radio for now okay so this is a 1200D it is some of the new series radios that the Kenwood corporation has brought out and I understand they are digitally based um, thus you don't need an additional license to to make it digital like with the Motorola's they are standard digital and they can scan between digital and analog okay so what we've got in the box is the radio and the battery let's see what the size of the battery is and immediately we can see this is a KNB 45 2000 milliampere hour battery which is quite sufficient for a radio without a display okay and then of course we've got some the dust cap and the belt clip and the retaining clip okay let's have a look at what we've got and let's start with the radio like we usually do. <coughs> I like the radio. I like it a lot. And what I see is the microphone is, is not, not inside there. It's quite separate. So remember that if you make a carry case for it. Um, nice plastic that is made of. It is a, a plastic PDT button. Two rubber programmable buttons. A nice rubbery LED indicator on the top. It has the retaining, uh, it has the accessory adapter, which is common of Kenwood to do, and it has a screw on little cover, if you like. Okay, and immediately what I can see that I do like about this product is the fact that the belt clip screws onto the um, chassis the belt clip screws onto the chassis so there's no chance that it can break loose out of plastic there's no chance that it can break loose from the battery or if the battery doesn't latch in nicely that you will actually get the radio damaged i like this design um, everybody that follow the channel will know that i prefer that and also at the bottom there are decent Decent places for the battery to fit. Um, Kenwood has changed over the last few years to have this little protection over, over the latch where you almost need two fingers, you need two hands to just get the battery off. Um, and that is a replaceable part. That little little door there is a replaceable part, which is <coughs> which is good. Um, but also I have seen this fail before. Um, I like this design though, but I have seen it fail and, and to buy those little individual parts is such a job to get it replaced. But um, nevertheless, it is a good design. If this cracks, obviously, if this part cracks while the radio has been dropped, the battery will not be secure anymore. So just bear that in mind. Apart from that, I like the design, um, but I'd far rather prefer a latch on the top. So click in from the bottom in the metal and then have a latch at the top okay but i suppose these guys have done their own work and they feel that this is the better way to go some decent rubbers on here um, and since the kenwood 2000s and um, they've put like a little raised rubber here to make it like vibration proof small things like this make a device nice because they look at certain things in the market devices that fail and then they improve it by doing things like this okay very tall buttons um, very tall buttons 
um, no protection on the side of these buttons. So should you be able to drop a device, um, you may have that problem. Okay. Like I said, the battery clips in at the top and it is a secure fit. It is a nice design, like I said. Um, I would prefer you can't accidentally get the battery to unclip. You need to lift the tab, push it down, and then the battery will break away. Okay. Um, I like this design with the belt clip there. As mentioned before, there's a place for, for a carry strap, which has not been provided. And then, yes, it takes an SMA antenna. So for an external antenna, you can certainly make one up for yourself. Okay, let's have a look at the retaining of, or, or the um, escutcheon as it was called on some devices, but the little cover that covers the part there. Okay, so if you've got the cover on, it closes with a little screw and it, it looks neat. It, there's no accidental way of of losing this part so so that is a good thing I'm not going to put it on as I don't have a screwdriver here but you get the idea it's a nice smooth finish when it's done they also provide a, a retaining clip which um, you can fit on the device in such a way if you've got an accessory adapter in there this will hold it in position the problem with with this style of accessory adapters that they use is if you don't use such a retaining device as this this will tend to wear out and it is quite pricey and also a tedious job to replace so uh, yeah it, it's a good thing and make sure that you do use the retaining clip when you use the accessory part on that otherwise you will be sorry and it's going to cost you a few bucks to get it replaced uh, some comments on the belt clip it has a a sh short raised raised edge and uh, at the bottom so once you've put it in your belt it won't accidentally come off that is a good design I like it however it is still plastic um, and it could still break but that part is metal so yeah it's good I like this it fits on the chassis and it is good I have seen that if some devices are dropped and it falls on the ground with that part, it does snap the plastic because this is very hard. Um, but nevertheless, that's that's good. Okay, not going to look at the antenna though, as there are some different splits, but they're all basically the same. Um, it has a nice feel to it without the um, without the belt clip. Nice feel in the end. Not too bulky though. It feels good. It it really feels good. I can with and a Motorola um, always feel good. You can feel that there's some design put into it. Uh, it is a bit bulky. It's not the thinnest of devices, so it, it is bulky. So with the belt clip, it may be a, a teed more uh, um, bulkier. Okay, let's have a look at the charger. Um, the, the, the supply charger is a KSC43. Uh, we have looked at this charger before, as I think they supply it standard with many of the devices, but just for the sake of the video if you haven't watched the others <clears throat> let's have a look and see what we have there we have the two pin transformer which I do not like um, and then we also have the cradle part okay and as I want to mention before flashing green says complete I think there's a change on this one let's just have a look and see Okay, that's what it says. So this will charge both batteries. Okay. Okay. So it has different cups um, that you will be able to turn around. That shows you, this is quite interesting, it is quite new. Um, if it is in this way, it says nickel metal hydrate. Um, and if it is in this way, it says lithium iron. Now, this is interesting. The battery that was supplied 
um, is a lithium ion battery. And I, I just wonder, just having a look at this, that uh, how many people actually will remember to turn it around. This is a lithium ion battery inside the box. The charger that was supplied um, was turned away, was turned this way. So standard, this charger is supplied as a nickel metal hydrate. Be very careful because I'm sure this is going to influence the warranty of your battery. So make sure that it is clipped in in lithium iron. Make sure that this is the correct way around. Um, it, it is good that it's got like a little window. The problem is just that you may have it in the wrong way and I don't know what the effect of that will be. Just something I've, I have just noticed and uh, cautiously warning everybody about it. Okay, this is unique to Kenwood. It has a specific uh, plug on the end. However, um, they've kept this at 15 volt. I don't know if it will accept 12 volt and charge fully. I cannot comment on that as yet, but I seem to recall in the past we've tried that and we will supply 12 volts to it. It does. It's not sufficient to get the battery charged fully. So, so be wary of that. Um, that is one problem that could arise. Okay, well, let's just move everything closer and let's have a look and see um, what happens if we've got the charger in there. I'm going to keep it like that so we can see what happens. Um, okay, now that's what I don't like about the chargers is there's no way for you to know that there is actually power. Nothing. Even if you plug it in, okay, there you go, no flash, nothing, Just it just sits there. I don't like that, um, as this now means we need to check if that's in, Do is there power, do we know there's no light on there, so uh, this is difficult. Guys, I'm straight up when I'm saying that, that from a technical point of view this is a problem. Nevertheless, let's see how it fits um, the battery in the charger. And there you go. Lo and behold, there is power. The problem is, is, is like I say, when you're on a site um, and you start fault finding and, and you don't know what to do, and you don't have anything else to check for mains, there's no light, like in this case, there's a light to show me that we've got power you do not know that the charger actually has power on it. Um, so yes, uh, two things I want to mention. Um, the one is I don't like the fact that the charger cannot tell you that there is power on it. Uh, I don't like that. And I also do not like the fact that you as the user must make sure that the battery is selected the wrong way around in the charger. Um, what exactly the effect will be when you put it on nickel metal hydrate instead of lithium iron. Will you damage the battery or not? I don't know. Maybe I can do a follow up video on just the charger and take it from there and answer a few questions like what will happen if we supply 13.5 volt or 13 volt? Will the charger still work? and will it charge the battery still fully. So I think that's something we can have a look at. If uh, you have any, any other ideas, um, yeah, pop me a line and uh, let's see in the description box what you would want us to have a look at. So there you go, the Kenwood NX1200. Um, in a nutshell, the unboxing of the Kenwood NX1200, I'm just going to keep it like this for my snapshot, um, maybe take it further on for my snapshot, just this. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and stay safe. Um, share our videos and please like it. If you feel you need to send a comment to me, please do so. I respond to all of them. Thanks.